A staple I do in all interviews in order to start things off is to ask that you elaborate a bit about your work and this particular role for those not familiar with it. Uh, my name is Julia Brown and I play Jessica Appleton in Fort Solace. I did the full performance capture and voiceover for the role uh, and she is a astronaut engineer who's stationed up on Mars uh, and our thriller sort of takes place over one night on Fort Solace where things start to go a little bit wrong. While not fully shown in the game, you are most certainly present for its entirety. What's the difference between the voice work versus being present within a particular situation? Yeah, so we kind of do the whole thing in the volume as though you're almost like shooting a film or a TV. So um, even if I was just kind of voicing off camera, we would still be doing it together. A lot of um, the action takes place between my character and Roger Clark's character. And for us to always kind of be in comms with each other, it helps like using the physicality of like being in the space um, with one another. And it was interesting how we captured the whole thing because we would do days of what they call locomotive which is just about how your character moves around the space and we capture everything from like turning doorknobs climbing stairs um over and over and over again walking in lots of different ways and then we do days of actually shooting the big cinematic scenes which is such a crucial part to Fort Solace um and then we would do all the voice work afterwards which was great because we kind of already had got it in our bodies and we would revisit it back in the recording studios and and do it that way so a little bit different for me who I'm very used to film and tv work where um you shoot it all in one day and you don't do it in this sort of bit part process when preparing to give your performance were you given any initial direction in regards to Jessica Appleton just in terms of any examples of prep work to get into the mindset of this particular character yeah, um, I was really lucky to work with our fabulous director, James Tinsdale, and he had done a lot of sort of um, character work on the script before we began. We we didn't have a huge amount of time before I, I came onto the game, kind of got thrown in the deep end a bit, but we discussed her at length and tried to find who she was as a person. But then we also did a lot of prep work and what it would be like to be working on Mars. So um, the sort of game designers who were on set as it was they really helped and trying to find tools for myself uh, Roger and Troy to feel the characters we had wore neck braces to remind us that we were wearing like the astronaut suit so we put sort of these pillow pads under our arms which would help us walk in a certain way and we wore boots as well so all these things like really aided us where you don't have you know sets and costumes to remind you that you're up in space. Yeah, I've actually interviewed your uh, co-worker there, and uh, he was mentioning when he did Red Dead that they had big clunky kind of outfits and whatnot. Uh, how does that kind of feel like the comparison of having something where you have to imagine the world as opposed to your traditional work where you are, say, on set and whatnot? Yeah, for me, it was a big difference. Uh, both the guys I worked with obviously have a huge amount of experience in the volume. And... Um, and I'm used to going to work and turning up and spending over an hour in the makeup chair and getting transformed into the character and then having like thousands of things to look at on set that sort of take you into that world. But in the volume, it's just you and, you know, loads and loads of sensors um, and you're wearing a suit that looks like you've got ping pong balls all over you and um, trying to kind of transform yourself to put yourself into a different world is takes a lot of imagination but we were really lucky that we also had um the games designers on there on the day and they were able to show us the sort of landscapes we were walking through because they'd already done like beautiful drawings of them and um even some of them had like walkthroughs that they showed us on the computer uh, and you also have the television screens that kind of show you as the avatar in the suit and it moves as you move, which I, I really, really helped me. Um, but yeah, a lot of imagination, but the great thing about doing performance capture is you can't really get it too wrong. Cause if you make it a bit big, then the designers can tone it down a little bit. They, you know, they can alter and adjust lots of things. So it means that you can really play without feeling scared to do anything too wrong. 
Within Fort Solace, there is a certain level of mystery being built. It starts off quiet with a light, easy-going atmosphere, and then things get tense quite quick. What was the feeling like from your perspective as you're going over the lines and seeing this shift in your character's responses to what's going on? Yeah, it was um, a great challenge. It, I was really fortunate of how we shot the whole thing because we kind of started the first few days with a locomotive and that was getting used to how she walked and it was all a bit a little more relaxed and then we sort of ramped it up and by the end of the week we were doing full sort of choreographed fight scenes. I think if I'd come in on day one doing like the, the most thrilling part, I would have um, got a bit of a shock, but it was great the way that the shoot was formatted and... um yeah, I think just gradually finding that for ourselves as the actors as we sort of shot it nearly in chronic chronological order was extremely helpful. Aside from being present on Mars, there's a heightened level of danger surrounding your character, particularly as the story progresses. How did you feel going from someone that's kind of sitting back a little bit, uh, you know, providing support, just kind of chatting over the comms, to directly being in the forefront of the conflict? Um. Yeah, I think, again, what was nice about it being that way around is it meant that Roger had a bit more of his difficult stuff up first. And I was able to like work, walk, you know, watch and learn from the pro. And then I had um, my more tricky stuff towards the end. But that was the most exciting stuff for me to capture, I feel. And I really, really loved working. We had an amazing stunt coordinator called Nathaniel and working with him and getting to do all that and um Jessica having a little piece of the action uh I think it helped as well that we'd sort of read the script through a few times together and we felt how it feel we, we really discussed the scenes at length and knew that this had to be scary and tense and brewing and how we could sort of capture that and have it grow and grow as the game goes on there's a really great cast that makes up this game you've got Roger Clark as Jack Leary You've got Troy Baker as Wyatt Taylor joining yourself. Uh, obviously, you were interacting with those individuals, as you've mentioned. Uh, what was it like interacting with them? They're very big in gaming. And with that, was there any fun interactions behind the scenes you'd like to just maybe highlight? Yeah, we had such a fun time. We um, shot all together for a week in London. And yeah, I was a little bit nervous before beginning because I knew how much experience both of them had. And I was coming to sort of quite fresh to mocap I'd done a little bit in the past but never done like a full game um but they were so lovely they both sort of welcomed me with open arms and really helped me with anything I didn't know and um, yeah we had a good laugh we went out for dinner pretty much every night together and um we really enjoyed doing the sort of big cinematics towards the end of the week and I suppose one of the funny behind the scenes stories is that um Troy we were rehearsing a fight outdoors and Troy was going over his part with our stunt coordinator and Troy goes big and goes home and he um managed to get shoved up against the wall and his butt basically went into the wall and made a huge crack um which was hilarious but the game studio weren't um angry at all sorry the performance capture centroid they uh asked him to sign it so he's now signed the wall that said um Troy's arse was here which is good I think they maybe have a frame on it now but instead of getting the wall um fixed they thought that was giving it more value so yeah there was lots of lot laughs to be had and then it's been so lovely being part of a process that goes on for a long time obviously games take so long to make although this was a really fast turnaround with such a small team but um meeting up with the guys again and I work with Roger again and Liverpool capturing some more um, voiceover and then we had a really fun trip to Boston together where we were at PAX East so a lot of uh, laughs and drinking um, Roger loves a Guinness which is great fun because I'm half Irish myself. That is actually just a wonderful story and as an add-in question that I'll put into this I understand that you guys are at uh, Gamescom you want to talk a little bit about that experience? Yeah, I'm super excited. It's my first Gamescom. Uh, I think it's Rogers as well, surprisingly. Um, and we're going to be on stage tonight, uh, opening night live, and the game is going to come out as we're talking about the game, which is really fun because it's been so long awaited. So it's so nice that for our release, like we're all together to celebrate it. Um, and I'll get to see a little bit more about 
what the games world is like being quite new to it all uh it's super super exciting and it's so nice for an independent game with such a small studio to you know be celebrated on this scale and hopefully have a really big exciting launch i hope that goes quite well for you uh what's it like to see your voice and or likeness attached to a game character it was so exciting i was really really waiting for um to see the first glimpse of Jessica because uh, I think she she was kind of the last face that they created. Uh, I had my facial scan back in January, the start of the year, and um, yeah, I didn't know what it'd be look like. They changed her hair, so I've got like kind of like buzz cut with the fringe, and she's got like lots of earrings and a nose ring. So like it's it's so funny to see your face there, but it doesn't quite look like you. It's like a new version which um, is a good laugh. It kind of will show me what I look like if I ever get my hair cut like that. Um, and then just to see your body, like I, Roger, he has such a distinctive walk and way of moving. And I know that like so many people love that in Red Dead and he's got, you know, he really embodies it. And, and the same thing, I watched him walking around the volume when we were doing the shoot and was so impressed at how he, basically brought this character a whole physicality and way of moving and then when you see the characters and how they move now in the trailer and stuff I'm like oh my gosh it's Roger it's so distinctive um and certainly that's something that I would want to like keep practicing and learning as I go on in the games world is like really choosing a distinctive physicality for each of your characters but yeah it's super cool I do see my walk and I'm like oh that's funny I'm doing that little thing with my hip and the way I move, um, it's really special to have that uh, a character that just is you. Do you see yourself being interested in additional game-related performances in the future? Yeah, for sure. I'm actually um, on a different game at the minute. I can't say what it is, but um, I have loved the experience every minute of it. And it's been so amazing. It's like such a great test of your imagination each day at work. And... Um, and just the perfect kind of work to kind of split up when I'm doing film and TV. I'm really excited to kind of be involved in more and hopefully continue to do lots more games. Lastly, I would like to leave a spot for you to say anything or go over anything I might have missed during the interview. I think we've covered all bases, but I just want to say to everyone um, that I hope they enjoy the game. We can't wait to share it with you. It's so exciting that it's been such a fast turnaround from a group of really, really hard working people at Fallen Leaf. Uh, it's a, such a small studio and I think it's amazing what they've pulled off and I really, really can't wait for you all to see it.